Welcome to the service of the Holy Eucharist, right to Eucharistic Prayer C. Everything you will need for this service is in the bulletin and hymn book. The words in bold are for you to gather to say. Our celebrant is Reverend Mary Thorpe. Please stand to the opening hymn and offer the second. Isaac. 
The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of their Shiva. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read from Psalm 86 responsibly by whole verse. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. He was for my life. So we too might walk in newness of life. For, we had, for if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, 
once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. of my mouth 
and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Let's spend a little time with our Old Testament reading this morning. You may think that I'm doing that to avoid preaching about the gospel, which certainly sets our teeth on edge with the language of Jesus coming to be among humankind with the sword and everybody fighting with everybody else. But looking at the passage from Genesis, Genesis isn't a whole lot better either. It's a hard one. Even so, I think it's an interesting one to ponder. First, before I begin to talk about this story specifically, I want you to remember that there are many messy stories in Scripture, particularly in the Old Testament. And when I hear televangelists and politicians preach biblical family values, I think to myself, have you really read the stories of the families in Holy Scripture? It's a series of soap operas, for heaven's sake. And so, this particular soap opera is all about Abraham. We would like to think of Abraham, the great proto-patriarch of the followers of the one true God, as a sterling chap. God told him to leave his home, and he and Sarah did, even though God was rather vague about where Abraham was supposed to be going. We'd like to think of the long line of successive generations leading on to King David and thence to Jesus as a whole bunch of sterling chaps. But first, we've got this story. Abraham and Sarah's childlessness is something that they thought would be dealt with when God promised them offspring. But time passed and nothing happened. They were getting older, as we do. And thus Sarah, in her anxiety about wanting and needing a child, came up with a solution. It is one that we would not be terribly happy about in our age, forcing her servant Hagar to lie with Abraham and bear a son, which Sarah would then adopt. And yes, this produced a child, a boy named Ishmael. At the moment, it seemed like a reasonable solution to Sarah, and Abraham was delighted by the birth of this boy. And then, surprise, surprise, Sarah, in her old age, got pregnant and then delivered a son named Isaac. I could go into a long disquisition about the notion of birthright and succession in the ancient world, and it would go a long time, and your eyes would glaze over rather quickly. <laughs> Knowing how Sarah, having adopted Ishmael as her own when he was born, should have seen him as the natural heir to whatever birthright Abraham would offer. But we know how human beings are, right? Because it wasn't only about birthright. It was about the boy, the first boy, this Ishmael, getting in the way of her joy and having a son of her own body with her husband. And so when she saw the two of them playing together, it rubbed against her spirit in a painful way. She didn't want to be reminded about how Ishmael came about didn't want to be reminded that she, Sarah, herself, forced that solution to a problem that God had always prom already promised he would take care of. She only wanted to see her son, her precious Isaac, this great gift from God. And every time she looked upon her servant Hagar, the seed of jealousy and anger grew. And so she told her husband to send this woman away. 
is foreign, a slave, someone with no resources, a long way from home. And she was to take the child Ishmael with her, so Sarah wouldn't have to look at him anymore either. Whatever happened to them? She didn't care. She simply wanted them gone. And we know that Abraham loved this boy, and he was sympathetic to the servant Hagar, this unwilling victim of circumstances beyond her control. Again, so much for biblical family values. <laughs> but his wife was his wife. God, seeing this mess, knew Abraham's quandary. And God said that Abraham should do what Sarah asked. That's caused me to scratch my head a few times. Because it was through the line of Isaac, Isaac that future generations should come. But he offered a consolation prize. Even in scripture, there's, but wait, there's a consolation prize. God would take care of Ishmael, would make another nation of him. We will give God credit for the fact that he didn't say, well, if Sarah hadn't jumped the gun and hadn't come up with this wacky idea of Hagar being her surrogate, none of this would have happened. God knew, as we all need to remind ourselves, that sometimes saying something like that is not particularly helpful. Now, I don't know what Abraham thought God meant in all of that he'll get the congeniality award kind of language about Ishmael, but Abraham handed Hagar some water and some bread and sent her and the boy off into the wilderness. What a guy. Just maybe, though, Abraham's actions were a mark of how much he believed God when God said, I've got this covered. Now, we know what happened. It didn't take long for Hagar and Ishmael to consume all the water and the bread, and it was a hot day, as it always is there. Hagar was pretty certain she was going to die and her son with her. And she couldn't bear to see him so thirsty, dying before her eyes. She told him to go over to another bush. Maybe there'd be some shade there, rest. And she wept. He wept too in his own little place under that bush. She wept as so many other mothers have wept for their children, lost to circumstances beyond their control. And it would just be a great tragedy if it ended right there, but there's more to the story. God delivered, as God always delivers, one of God's angels called out to Hagar and asked what was the matter. She shared her fear and her thirst, and suddenly she could see there's a well. She and Ishmael would have enough water. I presume that as their journey progressed back in the direction she had come from, God similarly provided. Because the story we hear today ends with Ishmael and Hagar finding a place for themselves and Ishmael growing, and his mom getting a, a bride for him. That's the way they did it in those days. It doesn't work quite the same way anymore, does it? <laughs> As God promised, Ishmael himself sired a great nation, but that's another story for another day. The most important thing here in this troubling story of messy human beings and the messy founding of the nation of God's chosen people is that God takes our messiness, our errors, our sins, and can still build on our imperfection to do something perfect beyond imagining. <coughs> it is true. No matter how melodramatic the soap opera, no matter how sour the sin, God loves us in the midst of it all and helps us to do more, to be more, to learn more, and to love more. And for that, all God's people say, Amen. Amen.
stand now and reaffirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was the same man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious side. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We believe in one holy baptism from which we have been sinned. We believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. In the confidence that God sees all of us and counts us all of great value, let us offer prayers for every person in every place. For this holy gathering and for the people of God in every place. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all nations, peoples, tribes, clans, and families. Lord, have mercy. For all that is good and bountiful for the world, and for mercy, justice, and peace. Lord, have mercy. For all those in danger and need, the sick and the suffering, the hungry and the oppressed, travelers and prisoners, the dying and the dead. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves, our families, and those we love, for Cindy, Mary Lynn Schweitzer, Torsten, Paula, Vicki, Nicole and Laura, Sharon, Tom, Jay and Sabina, Kathy, Christia, Pat, Father Jim, Father Ty, Devin, Katie, Barbara, Karen, Chris, Roger, Helena, Sean, Bob, Frank, Bishop Susan, Bishop Michael Curry, Bobby, Cindy, and Louise. For those celebrating birthdays this month, for Sue, for Bill Smith, Patty, Christmas, Frank Petrie, and Jay Allen. For those celebrating anniversaries this month, Herb and Penny McCulloch, David and Catherine Noakes, and John and Karen Anderson. Lord, 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 Lord. Lifting our voices with all creation, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. Let us offer ourselves and one another for the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord our God. Our Father in heaven, who acknowledges each of God's creatures, receive the prayers we offer this day for all in every danger and every need through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you from our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we have not been repentant. We are truly sorry and we have not been repentant. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and give us. May take me in the life of your will and walk in your ways to the glory. 
God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We stand as you are able for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us greet each other with words and signs of peace. My friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Again and again you've called us to return, 
Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your, your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciles us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending
you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come because it is the Lord who invites you. <coughs> it is God's will that those who want him should meet him here.
and now on Thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have led us as a spiritual community in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.